in my pre-fight prediction video, I stated that I believed Anthony Fitzgerald would get a nod over Spike O'Sullivan. I was impressed that Anthony Fitzgerald had gone the distance at what I considered to be a relatively high level of opposition that includes Hassan and Jikam and Andy Lee. Two guys I view as decent talents within the middleweight division. Spike O'Sullivan is a guy I've seen fight twice in the flesh. Once on the David Hay Derek Chisora undercard I went to that fight at West Ham and once against Billy Joe Saunders. Spike last night proved me very very wrong. He looked devastating. From the initial punches thrown it looked like he was in danger or Anthony Fitzgerald was in danger of being knocked out immediately. Spike looked very heavy handed. He looked very very powerful. He looked like someone who was likely to get a stoppage win over Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald in comparison looks small. Now I know this fight was at a catch weight and I know there was a six and a half pound weight difference at the weigh in so it's perhaps not surprising he looks small. But let's make no mistake here, Spike is a very very large middleweight. He's a big man at the weight and it showed. He looked bigger, stronger, more powerful, more dangerous, more threatening. He looked like a man with real, real potential. And let us not forget, this is a chap who's only lost once. At this point, it's unclear what his potential could go on to be. I think before his loss to Billy Joe, he was rated as highly as 3 or 4 in the WBO rankings. You know, this is a guy with potential. Now the question for this specific video... Does Spike's performance last night act as a shot in the arm for Billy Joe Saunders' form ahead of the Chris Eubank Jr. fight? To phrase it differently, does this performance from Spike make me think Billy Joe Saunders is more likely to beat Eubank Jr.? Now, regular viewers of my channel will know that I'm a big Billy Joe Saunders fan. Not necessarily of his outside of the ring antics, but certainly of his potential in the ring. And that I expect Billy Joe to do the job in Chris Eubank Jr. I think it's too early for Chris Eubank Jr. And let me say, Spike is exactly the type of opponent I would have liked to have seen Eubank Jr. face ahead of this fight. Blackwell, Spike, John Ryder, one of those tough British level guys. You know... For me, the fact that Eubank Jr. hasn't been able, well, hasn't got the job done against one of those guys in a pro ring means there's an element of uncertainty about him. Whereas with Billy Joe, we've seen him take out undefeated fighters many times. Spike O'Sullivan, Emmanuel Blandamura, John Ryder, I'm sure, beat Jared Fletcher earlier on in their careers, Blackwell. Um, not that those guys were defeated, but the first three were. Um, now, with the Spike Billy Joe fight, that was an absolute whitewash. You know, Billy Joe looked on a different planet of ability to Spike. It was embarrassing for Spike. He was outclassed, outfought, destroyed. Pretty much lost every single round in that fight. Let me say, this is an example of Billy Joe taking on a very, very large middleweight, a big man at the weight. To reiterate my concerns on Eubank Jr., I think he's been fighting a, too, uh, a level of opposition that's simply too small in competitive action. His last opponent, at middleweight, is fighting next time out for the German welterweight title. But this isn't the only time he's feeded on smaller opposition. The two examples I usually give are Tyan Booth and Bradley Price. Both light middleweights. You know, Eubank Jr. not only has feasted on a lower level of competition, but also on a lighter, lighter competition. Whereas Billy Joe has taken on big middleweights, like John Ryder, like Spike O'Sullivan. So I think that is relevant. 
Now, if you watch the Spike Billy Joe fight, which I did, as I say, in person and subsequently the televised person, Spike doesn't look like a more powerful man. He doesn't look like a hard puncher. He doesn't look like a dynamic fighter with potential to win titles at any real level. He's frustrated, he's outclassed, he's outskilled, and he's outsmarted by Billy Joe Saunders. Now, Billy Joe doesn't knock him out, but what Billy Joe does is use movement, use technical amateur background, use footwork to nullify Spike's game. Spike wasn't able to land the kind of punches that he landed on Anthony Fitzgerald. Because Billy Joe Saunders was a bigger man. A man with an exceptional jab, exceptional movement, exceptional footwork, exceptional hand speed, exceptional combination punching. Billy Joe beat Spike on the outside, he beat Spike on the inside, he outstrength Spike, he beat him tactically. He completely took away his game. And as I say, Spike proved conclusively last night that he was the dominant fighter over Anthony Fitzgerald. The same Fitzgerald who put in spirited performances and stayed the distance, you know, didn't get stopped against Hassan and Jikam. And Andy Lee. And that's strong, strong form from my eyes with Billy Joe Saunders. That reads very well given the nature of his performance. Now I also think there are certain parallels here between Spike and Chris Eubank Jr. I appreciate completely that Eubank Jr. has a greater upside than Spike. Arguably, I think, likely, almost definitely, he has better attributes than Spike. I'd probably pick Eubank Jr. in a fight over Spike. But there are some similarities between the two. Namely, that they look better when coming forward on their front foot. Neither guys, in my opinion, are defensive wizards. Neither guys are world class at this stage on their back foot. What they, where they can look exceptional is against less able opponents. Maybe it's because they're smaller, maybe because they're weaker, maybe just because they're not as good. And they're able to put the pressure on, to throw punches, to use their best work without you know, having too much come back their own way. It's very, very easy to look absolutely devastating when you're fighting a welterweight with 20 losses on his record. Or when you're hitting a bag that's on the wall. It's very easy to make a very nice sound when you hit a punching bag stationary on a wall. It's very easy to look like a power puncher under those circumstances. Now, Spike looked absolutely devastating last night. Everyone can watch that film and say that this is a like a guy with immense power, a big guy, brute force, you know, huge upside. But look at what Billy Joe did to him. Movement kills, footwork kills, defensive skills get wins. And the way Spike looked last night, to remember that Billy Joe pretty much took every round of him in hindsight that could be Billy Joe's best performance especially considering the dominance he had that night because Spike's form is starting not to look too bad now after knocking out Anthony Fitzgerald in the way he did clearly Spike has power to an extent as does Chris Eubank Jr but Spike's power didn't seem to bother Billy Joe that night. A 
lot of people comment on my videos and say Chris Eubank Jr. will knock him out. If he does, he'll have to be a hell of a lot bigger fighter and a hell of a lot more powerful than the man who knocked Anthony Fitzgerald out in 1 minute 45 last night. We shall see. For me, this is exactly the kind of test Billy Joe Saunders needed to get him in the position he's now in of European and Commonwealth level, getting ready to step up. It's a tough, tough middleweight who came to win, who was unbeaten, who was big, who hit hard, who was rated highly with the governing bodies. And Billy Joe destroyed him. Eubank Jr. just hasn't got that experience of fighting a big middleweight in a competitive professional room. I'm sorry he's fought bigger guys than sparring, but it's very different. Eubank Jr. hasn't got that experience and this kind of fight would have been an excellent learning fight ahead of stepping up to fight a talent like Billy Joe Saunders. Spike and Eubank Jr. they both look like power punchers but my belief is that movement kills Spike and Billy Joe's movement has the scope to strike again. Thanks for watching.